welcome to the program. There is considerable tension overshadowing Australia's diplomatic relations with China tonight, with the continuing incarceration of a Rio Tinto mining executive arrested in Shanghai by secret police on charges of espionage and theft of state secrets. The Chinese Foreign Ministry tonight claimed to have proof that state secrets have been stolen. As Australian consular officials try to verify the basis for these charges, they're yet to be granted access to the executive, Stern Hu, General Manager of Rio Tinto's iron ore operations in China. Mr Hu's arrest on Sunday, along with three other Rio Tinto employees, has come at a tense and critical time in the drawn-out negotiations of new prices for Australian iron ore exports, uh, for which Australia is by far the biggest buyer. The arrests also come hot on the heels of Rio Tinto's rejection of the Chinese state-owned corporation Chanelco's bid to double its stake in Rio Tinto. Business editor Greg Hoy reports. As the Australian consulate seeks further information, Rio Tinto continues to express its complete surprise at the arrest in Shanghai of its head of iron ore operations in China, Stern Hue, allegedly for espionage and stealing state secrets. The the relevant Chinese authorities have sufficient evidence to prove that they have stolen state secrets which has greatly damaged China's economic security. Let's not get engaged in this business of political grandstanding on the home front. Let's get on with the practical business of supporting an Australian in difficult circumstances. And that is what the foreign minister and Australian officials are doing. It's the right course of action. In so many ways, it's a red-hot issue. The voracious appetite of Chinese steel mills for Australian iron ore continues unabated, despite the financial crisis and China's best efforts to stockpile iron ore at deflated prices. The Middle Kingdom still hopes to purchase around 200 million tonnes of Australian iron ore this year to feed its need for steel. Their own domestic supply of iron ore is falling, and is not competitive and they need to import a lot of iron ore to meet those steel targets and that can really only come from two main places, Australia and Brazil. And Australia is a lot closer, we offer a lower cost product and you know, we're favourably uh, disposed to supplying it. Meantime, debate intensified as to how Australia should respond to China's arrest of Rio Tinto's Stern Hue and three of his company colleagues, some of whom stand accused of taking bribes from a Chinese steel company, arrests which some surmised may have been related to Rio Tinto's recent rejection of the Chinese state-owned corporation Chinalco's efforts to double its stake in Rio Tinto itself. Well, the Australian government has to work in consort with all other governments around the world and see this as a clarion call that uh, state-owned enterprises of the Communist People's Republic of China are at one in their purpose and organisation with the government of China. Therefore, the, the pressure Mr Rudd must immediately apply is at the highest level. It is grossly irresponsible, grossly irresponsible on the part of Barnaby Joyce to be speculating about possible reasons, uh, seeking to link it to the uh, failed Chinalco deal. Barnaby Joyce doesn't know. He's just trying to get a headline and Malcolm Turnbull ought to pull him into line. It appears that Mr Emerson is saying that there is a, a commercial precedent that we should let someone rot in jail. Uh, because of uh, commercial sensitivities. Um, the best thing we can do for Mr Stern Hugh is to raise the profile of this case. We can't have it that um, because a deal goes bad um, with a state-owned owned enterprise of the Communist People's Republic of China, that an Australian citizen gets whisked off the street in Shanghai and we haven't really heard from him since. That's a reference to the recent agreement by Rio Tinto and BHP Billiton to combine their iron ore operations in the Pilbara into a joint venture, a proposal which has caused considerable consternation in China, whose regulators are worried this will add to the pricing power of Australia's major miners. The Chinese may yet try to block this marriage. I think arguably they do have jurisdiction over it if they held that the joint venture did constitute a concentration. Uh, which could have the effect of eliminating or restricting competition in China. The problem would be, to what extent can they actually impose penalties or impose requirements 
on activities which happen outside China. China is a very large market for BHP and Rio Tinto, so I would have thought it might not be a good idea, commercially speaking, for Rio and BHP just to disregard the concerns which are expressed by Chinese authorities. Adding to sensitivity over the timing of these arrests is the fact Australian iron ore producers and Rio Tinto in particular have refused to cave in to China's insistence that given the global downturn and the scale of its imports from Australia, it should be given a much greater discount for iron ore imports than the 30% price cut already agreed to by Japan and Korea. There were rumours last night the Chinese were about to acquiesce and accept the same price as others. But today, no confirmation was forthcoming. So, despite signs of optimism, the fate of China's iron ore price negotiations remains in the balance, as does the fate of Rio Tinto's Shanghai executive, Stern Hugh. This is a serious issue, and um, you know, we must go forward with not only trading arrangements, but with arrangements that, that deal with the, the fundamental freedoms and rights of people uh, that, that are part of this nation and should be part of people across the globe. It is inappropriate to make this individual judicial case bigger or even politicise it because this will be no good for Australia. Well, clearly, you know, the, the global picture for steel is, is not particularly bright at this time. Uh, however, we think in the medium to longer term, it's very good for Australia because China is going to increasingly need more iron ore and it's going to have to import it from places like Australia. That's the prime place for them to come because of the closeness and the quality of product. Uh, we think they're going to make more investments, particularly we think in iron ore in the magnetite space where there are going to be new mines. There are already some being developed and there will be more. And, and China's very happy about using magnetite. You know, Australia's not a big magnetite producer so far, but we think the outlook is really very positive, medium to long term, for iron ore and, and bulk commodities out of Australia generally.